Last week I began the homily series, as I said before Mass, called Understanding the Eucharist. And we're looking at the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, that great chapter that gives us what the scholars call the bread of life discourse. It began with the feeding of the 5,000 last week, continued with Jesus walking on water, and then we hear Jesus say not only that he is the bread of life, but that his flesh is true food and his blood is true drink. And further we hear Jesus say, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. And I concluded last week with the thought that not only does Jesus want a relationship with us, but he wants an intimate relationship with us. And there's nothing more intimate than to be able to give your body to another person. And that's what Jesus did for us, not only on Holy Thursday at the Last Supper, but also he gave us his body on Good Friday on the cross. And so this week I want to connect those two events. There's one line in last week's gospel that I did not mention in my homily because I wanted to wait and use it today. Last week's gospel began with these words. This is John 6, 1-4. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples, and I've got an underline and italicized there, the Jewish feast of Passover was near. It's that last sentence that I want to focus on today, because John points out that the Jewish feast of Passover was near, and it's like he just kind of puts that in parenthetically, but it is something that's really deeply connected with what we do every Sunday. The early Christians, most of whom were Jews, saw that deep connection between what happened on Holy Thursday and what happened on Good Friday and connecting those events with the Passover event. For them, the Passover was the old covenantal sacrifice and, and uh, the connection was that this new covenant that Jesus established on Holy Thursday and Good Friday was the new covenantal sacrifice. And so that's what I want to look at today. And once again, I'm doing this series because I think once we get a, a deeper understanding of the Eucharist, it helps us to see the incredible beauty uh, that God has given us in the gift of the Eucharist. So John points out that the Jewish feast of Passover was near. And all the Gospels connect the Last Supper with that Passover celebration. It's interesting that Jesus doesn't connect the action that he's about to perform to the Jewish feast of atonement. He doesn't connect it to the Feast of Hanukkah or the Festival of the Booths or to the Jewish New Year. He connects it to the Feast of Passover. And let's look at how he does that. And more importantly, let's look at why he connects Holy Thursday and Good Friday to the Passover. To understand the Feast of the Passover, we have to understand a little bit about Jewish history. The end of the book of Genesis tells us how the Israelites, the Jewish people, find themselves in Egypt. All right. Uh, there had been a great famine in Israel, and the Jewish people now are, 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 are uh, in Egypt, and they're becoming more numerous there in Egypt. They go there in search of food. And once in Egypt, the Israelites keep increasing in numbers until one of the kings, called the Pharaoh, uh, decides that they're getting too big, and he wants to enslave them all, force them into labor. Uh, then, because he wants to make sure they can't multiply, the Pharaoh decides to kill all the baby boys uh, of the Hebrews. One Hebrew woman attempts to save her baby by placing him in a basket and sipping off the Nile River. Uh, the Pharaoh's daughter sees this baby in the river, uh, has pity on him, and raises her in his own house. That baby would, of course, be Moses. As an adult, Moses is commanded by God to convince the Pharaoh to let the people out of their slavery, to let them leave Egypt. And so ten times Moses goes uh, to the uh, Pharaoh and says, let my people go. And ten times the Pharaoh refuses. And after each refusal, there's a plague that comes, uh, culminating in the last plague, the death of the firstborn of all the Egyptians. The Israelites are instructed on how to avoid having their children killed in that death of the firstborn. This is recounted in uh, Exodus chapter 12, and we read this accounting every Holy Thursday night. All right, it's the first reading on Holy Thursday. Long story short, each household is to sacrifice a lamb. It is a young lamb without blemish. All right, think about this in connection with Jesus. A young lamb without blemish. The blood of the lamb is placed on the doorpost of the Israelites' houses. 
so that when the angel of death comes, it will pass over the house of the uh, Israelites uh, and their children will be spared. So that's how the Israelites are spared because of the blood of the lamb. All right? This is going to make a little more sense a little bit later. And then Moses gives them, gives them this instruction. This is Exodus 12, uh, 24 to 27. You will keep this practice as a perpetual institution for yourselves and for your descendants. Thus, when you have entered the land which the Lord will give you as he promised, you must observe this right. When your children ask you, what does this right of yours mean? You'll reply, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. When he struck down the Egyptians, he delivered our houses. The original Passover, the old sacrifice, saved the Jewish people. The new Passover, the new sacrifice of Jesus, saves us. Now here's what Jesus, uh, the Jewish people, teach about the Passover. This comes from the Mishnah. The Mishnah is, is kind of like our ritual book, our, our Roman lectionary. The, the Mishnah is the Jewish liturgical rites. And this is what it says. In every generation, a man must regard himself as if he came forth himself from Egypt. In other words, the Jews at the time of Jesus saw the Passover as not just simply commemorating something that happened long ago, but that they actually saw themselves being saved by it. All right, so they were kind of transported in time back to that original Passover event, experiencing once again the exodus from Egypt. And they did that every year. But now when Jesus celebrates his Passover meal with his disciples, he breaks with tradition. All right, he takes the unleavened bread, the bread that is flat, it doesn't have any yeast in it. He takes that unleavened bread and he says, take, eat, this is my body for you. And with the cup, he says, this is the cup of the blood of the new covenant, which will be poured out for you. Do this in memory of me. And I have to imagine that the disciples question that. Why is Jesus messing with the words of the Passover text? Now, all that takes place on Holy Thursday night. And then the very next day, Jesus fulfills it. He fulfills it. This is my body for you. This is my blood poured out for you. He fulfills it when he gives us his body to us uh, in his death and when his blood is poured out for us. The Passover then for the Jewish people was not just a meal, it was a sacrifice. And this mass that we celebrate is not just a communal meal, although it is that, but it's also the sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross made real for us once again each time we celebrate mass. It's Holy Thursday and Good Friday wrapped up all together in the sacrifice of the Mass. The early church, once again, most of those were Jews. The early church understood this immediately. St. Paul writing just 30 years, 30 years after the ascension of Jesus in 1 Corinthians 5, chapter 7, or chapter 5, verse 7 says, For Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Paschal means Passover. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Uh, Paul is saying that Jesus was sacrificed just like the Passover lamb is sacrificed. And we acknowledge this every time we come to Mass and we sing, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And then I say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Four times in the liturgy, we recognize Jesus as the Passover Lamb, as the Lamb of God. And so Paul continues, Therefore let us celebrate the feast, not only with the old yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And the feast St. Paul is talking about just 30 years after the death of Jesus is the Eucharist, which already the Christians were celebrating in their home. And he talks about it in more detail in chapters 11 and 12 of 1 Corinthians. And so we hear about the Eucharist very soon after the resurrection and the ascension. And the early church fathers tell us what the church believed about the Eucharist. Last week I, I quoted St. Justin Martyr explaining what happens at each Mass. Well, his description of the Mass. St. Ignatius of Antioch, writing at the same time, so this is 
early or the middle of the second century, St. Ignatius of Antioch states this about the Eucharist. I take no pleasure in corruptible food or in the delights of this life. I want the bread of God, which is the flesh of Jesus Christ, who is the seed of David. And, and for drink, I want his blood, which is incorruptible love. St. Ignatius in the second century says, it's already an understanding of the church that this is Jesus' actual flesh and his actual blood that we receive as Christians. St. Cyril of Jerusalem repeats this in the 4th century. Therefore do not consider them as bare bread and wine, for according to the declaration of the Master, they are his body and his blood. This is the earliest tradition of the church. In fact, this is what the church believed all the way up till the Protestant Reformation when a symbolic or metaphorical understanding of John 6 and the Last Supper began to take hold. My friends, each time we celebrate the Eucharist, we celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary. We celebrate Holy Thursday and Good Friday all wrapped up together. And when the fulfillment of the words of Jesus the night before he died, take this all of you and drink this, take this all of you and drink this, this is my body, this is my blood. Do this in memory of me.